so welcome back once more and here it is the beginning of the promised tutorials so first of all I'd like to direct your attention to github.com slash mushroom fleet slash the dash best dash universe there will be a link in the description and that will bring you here the best universe so I'm just going to quickly read this down for you so this is our public repository for our server it's got many files that we use and they work with the current version there's a few extras like the Smedit extra memory which uh, shows you how to load more RAM we tested it with I think 56 gigabytes so it definitely works we have a server template remember that this has just been reorganized so that you can see everything in categories and alphabetical but as soon as you actually run it it'll get eaten and jumbled and it'll look like it did before but your values will be retained so it's just a nice way to quickly look and see what everything you know what all the options are there obviously uh, I will be presenting similarly formatted versions but that comes later we're just going to do an overview right now of what's here you can poke through it at your leisure take what you need customize it and add it to your own project so the server template is just the server.cfg that's all gameconfig.xml currently all we've done is change the uh, ship and station limits which are in that xml if they don't work that's not our issue as far as we know they work but you know you should always test everything that you change yourself uh, some of my scripts which are useful for uh, monitoring and scheduling automatic restarts I use Tmux and cron because I uh, moved away from screen about five years ago it's getting pretty old now it's still nothing wrong with it but uh, I use Tmux now so uh, custom import XML so this is the bit that you would use so the thing about StarMade is all of the files that are in data slash config there's all of your config files for your server are in there and you can change a lot of stuff you can add a lot of content using the custom import features and it's just as simple as using notepad there's no modding experience required here you just follow it so what I've done is given some updated examples because a few of them were a little out of date like the block config structure has changed slightly since the old template um, and I think the block behavior config there were a few com uh, templates that just don't share any similarity with the current game and that's fine but like I said I'm providing this to people because it helped us and it means you don't need to worry about hashes you don't need to worry about um, the game updating because this will be imported after the game updates so you retain all of the changes you've made so if you want to run a custom balance on your server, maybe you're doing a theme, maybe you just want to experiment with values, this is this is the best way to do it. So the custom block behavior config, that determines what the blocks do when they're being used. This is like the behavior of the block, right? Block config import will either alter what the block is yeah or you can't you used to be able to create new blocks but we use mods for that now that does require Java experience and I think if I just quickly pull back repositories yeah we've got the green screen block here as an example of how you would oof. well that's I need to clean that up because clearly one of them is correct and one of them is ancient new project setup fix source oh, it's probably that one so that's your Java for making a custom block you will need uh, texture and a block icon but we use the same one for both to keep it simple and you can define what the recipe is with fat what factory it goes in and various other bits and pieces all right anyway that's that's another thing we're not looking at that we're looking at the best universe so I mean just to give you an example of how this is going to look you click on that batch file and it will give you the line that you you know the batch file so you save that in the directory 
Obviously, you've got to make sure your smedit jar is matching. Okay. And that's all you need to worry about. Uh, right. Also, I've got a link to Joja Quinter's repository here and a link to Yelby's Duckets and Flora Factory, which he made for us. So he also helped me fix my green screen block because I had a few problems. There were, were typos. It's always typos. Anyway, or a space instead of an underscore. Stuff like that will just break the whole thing. Okay. Syntax. So we're going to use the custom block behavior config to show you how to set a few basic settings and then all the weapon ranges with all the combo ranges okay now you got to remember these are multiplied with the weapon range reference so if I just show you the uh, config so that's the set template see this this line here weapon range reference okay it's not multiplied with the sector anymore so ignore any, any anything where it says this is multiplied with the sector ignore the default is 2000 in the current vanilla we're using 1000 just because it makes for easier math in the next config because if you use 2000 then obviously you've got a half all your values which is unnecessary if you just use 1000 so uh, so if we go into custom block behavior all right and then we can see I've increased the personal salvage beam bonus so that's astronaut mode mining and then I've increased the rail mass enhancer from 50 to, to 100 these are just basic changes so the way this has been written is you have to copy the structure of the XML but only put in the lines you want to change so if there were no basic values right if we weren't doing anything in general hang on a minute I've just spotted an error, error. that basic values can't be there because it's here oh wait yeah it can oh wait here it is sorry I'm getting ahead of myself basic values closes there okay so that basic values they're all in one group and then warp gate has warp gate basic values is the thing I want to change there's other things in there but you only put in the line you want to change so if I was to show you the actual the actual config so here is the block behavior dot XML in all its glory so shuffle this a bit. so if I was just to scoop down somewhere like thruster I could change something to do with thrusters I could change the max thrust mass ratio you know you wouldn't want to mess with this all right but you could so you could change that to 10 and you could have the minimum at one so you could never have zero all right that's just an idea off the top of my head so you never want to have a zero thrust ratio you want it to be one and six or you can do that there just by copying these two lines and then putting them into see this says thruster basic values so all you need to do is find out what thruster is nested inside. So there's thruster. Looks like it's below general on its own. Yeah. Whoops. But like I said, it's a good idea to look through this and just check because obviously repair beam has its own thing. So repair beam, basic values and thing. We don't have repair beam. Yeah, we do. Rep air beam. There we go. Because we've only affected the distance. So distance 0.5. Uh, I believe we've recently changed that from 0.25. So we buffed that a little bit. But the main change recently was we took away all of the half combos. So now the minimum range is 1,000. So that means all the weapons on our server at the moment are between 1,000 and 2,000 range we wanted short range engagements and we did feel that ships that were max size on our server look a bit silly with a 500 meter weapon because it's like not even as long as the ship is it yeah you could have a thousand meter long ship so you've got to have at least a ship length of range otherwise that's done so yeah we're, we're but like i said we are tweaking things to our taste 
mostly the problem is that AI tries to fight too far away. But like I said, this is how you'd want to do it. We've obviously changed a few other things. You can see here the possible zoom value for beam. That's been changed. So you can pretty much copy any value that you want. So here we go. Here's cannon, cannon uh, damage, right? So you could copy that line. You could copy the additive damage line too. You could take those two lines and then you could put them there under basic values and, and above distance and then you can do the same for every weapon and then you can set all those values yourself the only thing you've got to bear in mind is often you'll see uh, distance style we're using set so it's so it's 1000 times 1 1000 1000 times 2 2000 all right you can use buff all right, which basically are multiply it, sort of, and then you could use nerf, which would basically divide it, sort of. All right, there is a formula to it, and I'm not going to bother because we've we've got the formula listed in our Discord, and uh, it, it's it's all here. You know, you can see what the buff and nerf formulas are. Anyway, um, this would be how well, you can see. Look, cannon, missile, beam distance 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 right so we're only changing the distance line that's all nothing else everything else is exactly the same anything that isn't in here doesn't get changed and it will give you an error if you do it wrong so you can't do it and not know which is why I was a little bit weirded out when I thought I spotted an error earlier but obviously I was wrong so yeah so that basically shows how to do custom block behavior config XML all right all you have to do is mirror the structure so just pay attention to the structure block behavior general basic values okay block behavior general basic values once you've done all your basic values slash basic values and slash general it's a lot like html so obviously i've skipped i haven't changed any of this keep we go keep go keep 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 go until eventually it will say well in fact we can skip all that because we've got this here you go there you go general basic values and then that will slash basic values slash general then we're into stabilizer chamber conduit in fact I can get rid of general so there we go general stabilizer general. thruster main reactor cloaking jamming jump drive jump inhibitors scanners some of this stuff is old by the way so you can you can ignore it but always test your changes in single player before putting them onto your main server and if it is a public server it's a great idea to have a test server that way you at least know that what works in single player also works in multiplayer before you force it upon all of your players because i will be continuing this series with more tutorials on how to fully customize StarMade because it is probably the most customizable sandbox server game out there you can get your hands on there's a lot more uh, ability for you to customize things uh, than a lot of other games okay so this as you can see and here are your EM heat and kinetic uh, handles so a lot of this stuff doesn't exist anymore right like friend of fire missile heat missile those are gone basically um, so you can ignore that but like here we go missile capacity maybe you want more missiles because you're gonna make them weaker maybe you want less missiles because you're gonna make them stronger obviously you could uh, mitigate any balance issues with missile capacity changes simple stuff and like I say the way where would I put that in mine so there's cannon right and missile so what I would do now it may not matter but I tried to keep things in the same order. So if I was going to add in some missile, say I wanted to change missile capacity per block, because right now it's set to, here we go, here's a good one. Say I wanted to make it linear instead of exponent, right? Which means instead of these lines, we're going to use this line, all right? So if I was to change that to lin, it would change miss capacity per block to 0.1. Now, I'm not saying that's a good idea. I'm just saying if that's what you wanted to do, that's how you would do it. And to do that, you would need to copy these two at the bottom. You'd need to copy these two at the top. And then you would need to copy these two 
in the middle. You put those three blocks together and then put them under cannon and above missile. So that would be between these two lines. Yeah, so above missile, below cannon. That's where you would put it. And then you can change it to whatever you want and see how it works. If it was a bad idea, take it out. Now, it is a good idea to do all this in your single player because reverting the changes might not be quite as easy as you thought. If you drop in a brand new unchanged block XML and then run the import, that's clean. But if you make loads of changes, there's a, there is a chance that it could leave some of those in the XML. Now, I don't know if they've done a cleanup routine since. We haven't tested that. But just be aware that if you break stuff and then fix something else or just remove things from the import, those lines might actually still be in your single player XML. Now that doesn't matter because you can just re refresh it, you can just reinstall and get the fresh stuff back. So back up your blueprints and be careful because if you do break it you might have to roll this back. It's not a big deal because there are folders with defaults for you to roll it back. Anyway, that's enough about that because we're going to go on and on and on and really I want to get to the next one. So. The next config in the list is the block config import. Now, we're not making custom blocks with XML anymore. For some reason, the texture packs don't seem to work. It might be just a hashing issue. I haven't got around to testing it yet. But the point is, the texture packs that were working in the previous version don't work in this version. They just show up as black, uh, even though the files are in place just as they were before, they haven't moved. Anyway, block config import.xml, there could be any number of things called in that. So. What we're gonna do is show you how to overwrite the color and intensity of all light emitting blocks because they are normalized RGB values and for some reason they were a bit out of whack. And the current version of StarMade, this probably will get fixed. Uh, pink and purple emit the same color. Blue and teal emit the same color and red and pink no yellow and orange emit the same color so what we did was we went and fixed those normalized values on our server so i'm going to show you how it's done because it's a pretty good way to explain how you can actually change the value for any block in the game so as an ex as just an, a, a clear example of what i mean this here shows you how to we haven't changed them by the way but this shows you how you would change the armor value and hit points for basic armor standard armor and pink armor but bear in mind this is only pink and it's only the cube there may be other lines you have to add which i will explain with the lights because that'll make a lot more sense all i wanted to show you here is this is how you would so element general holds basic pink pink basic Standard pink, pink standard. Advanced pink, pink advanced. Holds, right? Because we're still in general to get to lights. Cube, block, and then we're into lights, right? I hope you can see that. But the idea is, if you wanted to radically change this game, uh, all the values are here. So you could change armor, hit points, for every block in the game to balance it with your weapon changes, if that's what you want to do. So, you know, they wouldn't give you all these controls if it wasn't up to the server owner. So, if we now go down, white light, okay, all I'm changing is the light, color, and intensity. Some people say this is alpha, but when we actually tested it, it's almost certainly intensity. Point one washes out the same area of lit up space but point one and below you can barely see it and it's not linear i think it might be inverse square so that it emulate i don't know though what do i know all i know is that the that makes it brighter so the default right now a lot of them are set to just one but it's I, if it is an alpha value it doesn't work like one it works like intensity um but yeah, that's borne out by what we've done here. So, white light, yellow light. So this is all the standard lights. And then obviously, 
there are quarter lights and half lights and three quarter lights for every color so this is no small job you've got to go through every color and every slab and then you've also got to do all the rods and you've got to do all the light bars and all the corners so you've got to do all of them and then there's also charged circuits which are also light emitting and there's ice crystal and all the other crystals and don't forget lava so you know wanting to change every color to a set that you prefer can be done and that would be how you would do it it's not you know i think the colors in the game are just fine it's just a couple of them are not emitting the true color they're just emitting yellow or uh, purple or blue okay and obviously you can emit orange and pink and teal if you want so anyway that's pretty straightforward it's exactly the same as last time if we take a quick look at the uh, actual block config again you only need to copy the stuff you want so if you wanted to change the recipe for a display module all you have to do is copy the block line and then this consistence bracket with the items change what you want it to be and then add that to your script in the correct place and then it's gonna change the recipe for just that block so you can make all kinds of micro and macro changes just with these XMLs okay so block config is what it is block behavior is what it does but we also have the custom effect config now I've used this just to show you how you can buff chambers so we've only added in the turn rate chamber right and then we've increased the numbers okay not so that it would be ridiculous but just so that you get a little bit more turn at each level all right and you don't have to do this but you could use any buff from the effects config okay but doing it like this means that an update doesn't break your changes which is a lot nicer on the players so we like that that's great and it's pretty straightforward now you've got to bear in mind though some of those effects are still work in progress what we've learned is that they some of them have yet to be hooked up so if you're finding something isn't working don't panic just uh, stick to the stuff that works um, the new thing I added was the NPC spawn config XML basically uh, this is to do with NPC factions all you have to do is put it in your NPC factions folder right you do have to put this one in data but because it's a separate folder it doesn't get overwritten this is an add-on okay so if I show you the files I've got to go into data NPC factions for this one and we've got two factions now one of them is just basic so we'll look at that one first so if I go into space apes you've got a blueprints.zip which we can't see but basically that contains one ship of every type when you save the ship you can select the type from a drop down list above where you type the name if you make ships for each role and you make stations for each role if you then save those blueprints as a zip okay all of those folders that you get in the blueprint save them as a zip and then you take the npc config xml and now i would if you're going to do this first time round, don't change anything the only thing you need to change is the name which is right here on line 245 i would just change the name and go with that because you can play around with all these and you can hideously break it or you could hideously make an overpowered NPC faction that just takes over the whole uh, galaxy Stellaris style okay so be careful it's probably easier to break that break this than make it work well or better than it should but you know here's an example I made it so that the space apes have particularly large fleets okay so when they start out they start out with a little bit more but not a lot you could put anything in there you know but uh, you put that in there and then there's one thing you need to do which is in the NPC spawn config 
what I've done is I've given the one that I use that works. So all you really do is you copy the faction block, right? And then you put it under, like I have here. These two are new. This one is the Space Apes. And this one is the Flat Galaxy. Okay. So if you were going to add a fourth, uh, you know, if you're going to have a third, uh, you'd make it, name it, and then name of the folder. Yeah. I think this means you can actually have multiples and mix them up, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I've literally, when I first came back to this game, people were telling me that all of this stuff would spawn as red slabs. So I'm glad to have found a method that doesn't result in red slabs. Okay. So you do this. You copy this section, you put the name of your faction in. I've just kept it the same for simplicity, okay? So the folder name is the same, the faction name is the same. In the other config I showed you just now, the name is the same, exactly the same. That way, I'm, I'm sure you probably don't need to, but this way it works. You can also change random spawn to false. And then you can use fixed spawn. So if you don't, if you want to plan it a little bit, there's an example of fixed spawn on here, which you can use instead. Okay. Um, right. And then the last thing you need to do once you've got all this uploaded to your single player or your server is, as I've put in the notes, run the final run this command here in the game. NPC underscore spawn underscore faction space quote space apes quote space quote the description of your faction quote space and then space apes in fact that shouldn't have space i've just broken everyone's world yeah they, 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 that shouldn't have a space i'm going to fix that right now i don't know why that's got a space because i think that's the one that actually looks for the folder but i'm not sure anyway typo Oh, typo in a command. That's a sin. Anyway, so that's pretty much where we're at. Um, I will do future features showing on what we're doing with the configs, anything else that we find out. But essentially, this is the method. I'm just going to have a look and see if there's anything else I've forgotten to tell you about. Uh... Oh yeah, the reason I use Tmux. Anybody here that uses Linux, you probably already know about this, but if you didn't, something interesting about Tmux is we can have a Tmux called NF MF1, which is, you might imagine, a named screen, but it's a little bit interesting because we can actually send keys. So when the server's running, I can script sending commands to the server, for example, telling everyone there's going to be a restart, doing a shutdown on 300 seconds, waiting and giving people a server message countdown, and then another script is already running a different timer for the sum of all these delays. And then basically what that, well, no, it's not the sum actually, because that adds up to that, and yeah. So essentially, there's another script, which I'll probably just go back and show you that now. Where is it? Auto restart, right? So auto restart does tells me it's doing soft shutdown, waits 10 seconds, runs the soft start, uh, which is what I just showed you, waits for 90 seconds, and then it runs a kill command. Okay. Uh, well, I'll show you that in a second. Because basically the server should have already gracefully shut itself down before this point. Okay. Because we're giving it enough time to do that. And then basically kill if it's still up, which it shouldn't be, but it might be. And then um, start the server again, basically. Seems to work. Works great for us. Um, I might even put the cron lines up, but... Can I put the cron lines up? Not yet. Uh, another thing that we uh, wanted to show off before I disappear. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My, this is my startup line we've been using for years. Um, it works. It's got garbage collection. Apparently, you don't need this anymore because it's deprecated. So yeah, I might, just, I might, I might edit that. But I'll test it before I just edit it. 
It still works. They just it just says it's deprecated. Uh, but yeah, uh, rules XML. So this would be a backup of our rules XML. You'd actually do it in game. But I just wanted to show you, like we've done stuff with it. So here example, the Y hole boost thrust. If you have a Y hole on your ship, you get a boost thrust. Okay. We also tried to do seg thruster explosive. I don't think that actually works. Anyway, also block limits, also uh, too many entity. So you can have the server keep an eye on players, you know? It's actually really good. Like, it really keeps an eye on it. Look, ooh, any ship with more than 1500 salvager groups gets put on the list, you see. Um, so yeah, you can really keep things under control. Um, and like I say, if you uh, are interested in running your own server, I'm going to be doing a Linux installation tutorial soon. We'll be showing you how to do backup, how to set up your automatic scheduling for restarts, and all that good stuff. So I'm going to end this video because it was getting a little lengthy. 31 minutes is about the limit for most people these days. But we're not interested in, you know, I'm just literally documenting what we're doing here. And if it's of use to other people, that's awesome. So, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.